Hi guys and welcome to Prague. Prague is an amazing city rich with culture, history and tradition. Over 8 million tourists visit Prague every year to explore this magnificent city. Formerly the capital of Bohemia, Prague offers a plethora of tourist attractions. Historic monuments, enchanted bridges, ancient castles, luxurious palaces, gothic towers, medieval churches, museums, local street markets, contemporary and medieval art, shows, theater, operas, and very tasty local food and gourmet restaurants. I've been to Prague for over a week to film the main attractions for you guys. It took me a long time to make this video, so I will be forever grateful if you please press the like button so that the almighty YouTube algorithm will make this video visible to more viewers. This video serves as a reference so you can always come back to it and find what you need. Use the chapter markers below to jump across attractions for easy navigation and check the description for more details. If you are new to my channel, Native Explorer is all about exploring like a local. I publish local secrets, hidden gems, as well as cool vlogs, tutorials, and product reviews, so please consider subscribing. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi guys and welcome to Prague. I'm standing behind the powder tower or the powder gate. The powder tower is an old city gate dating all the way back to the 15th century. It separates between the old town of Prague and the new town. It's a gothic tower, beautiful one, kind of looks like uh, you come out from a Game of Thrones episode. The city gate was destroyed during the Battle of Prague and then restored. It's also the beginning of the Royal Route. So if you have one day in Prague, you should follow the Royal Route to all the attractions. I will do them in order today, but you can read about the history later. Let's start and walk through all the monuments on the way. I'm climbing up the powder gate, the old city gate of Prague. It cost 150 kroner per person to enter. A lot of spiral stairs to the top. I'm at the top torrent of the powder tower. Very cool. Standing behind the municipal house. The municipal house is a civic building just adjacent to the powder gate. Here is the powder gate. It used to be the royal court of the Czech Republic. From 1383 until 1485, the king of Bohemia lived in this property. After 1485, it was abandoned and demolished in the 20th century. Construction of this house started at 1905 and it opened at 1912. The municipal house was also the location of the Czech Declaration of Independence. The municipal house is one of the most important buildings of the Czech National Revival. It now houses arguably the finest concert hall in the country, as well as a beautiful cafe and dozens of other glittering rooms and saloons. Just a few minutes walk from the powder tower, you can find the House of the Black Madonna. The House of the Black Madonna is a cubist building currently used by the Czech Museum of Cubism. The House of the Black Mother was built between 1911 to 1912. It is one of the main landmarks of cubic architecture and it is the first example of cubic architecture in Prague. It also houses Café d'Orient or Café of the Black Madonna that is dated all the way back to the 1920s. I'm not gonna go inside the museum but I am gonna have lunch at this café.
I'm walking at Seltna Street. Seltna Street is the street that's connecting the powder tower with the old town square. It has a lot of attractions, a lot of museums, galleries, candy shops, sweet shops. I did visit some of the attractions, but you don't have time to do everything. The steel gallery looks pretty cool. They have a Madame Tussauds, they have a chocolate museum, a lot of souvenir stores. Pretty cool street in the old town. I'm at Prague's Old Town Square, the center of the old city in Prague. The atmosphere here is absolutely magical. They have a Christmas market just before the end of the month. It's December right now. A beautiful atmosphere, especially during the night with all the lights and the Christmas trees. A lot of attractions are nearby. The square features various architectural styles, including the Gothic church of our old lady before time. It is this church behind me over here, which has been the main church of this part of the city since the 14th century. You can also see from here the old medieval astronomical clock located at the Old Town Hall, the building behind me over here. The clock was installed in 1410, making it the third oldest astronomical clock in the world and the oldest one still in operation. Wow! The Baruch St. Nicholas Church is another church located in the town. It is this church over there. Amazing atmosphere. You can shop, you can drink wine, you can eat authentic and traditional Czech food, especially the pork sausage, which I can't eat because I keep kosher. A very magical place to spend a leisurely afternoon and evening. At the center of the old town square is the statue of this guy behind me, Martyr Jan Haas. He was burned at the stake at 1415 as an heretic. I don't know what he did to deserve it. If you know, please let me know in the comments below. I'm really interested. I'm outside the Church of the Mother of God before 10, also translated into the Church of Our Lady before 10. This is a dominant and Gothic church in the old town of Prague, dating all the way back to the 14th century. You can see the church two towers that are 80 meters high from almost any point in the city. It's a free admission, no photographs allowed inside. The church is located on the old town square on the Royal Route, so you can visit it as you follow along the Royal Route. I'm in an art gallery in Old Town Square in Prague. They have permanent exhibitions over here of Salvador Dali and Wendy Warhol with original work. Pretty impressive. The price to enter is 390 krona for three exhibitions, or you can choose just the one you like. Pretty impressive collection. I wouldn't expect to find it in Prague, but here it is. The exhibition is on the Royal Route, so if you are here just for the day, I highly recommend you stop by this important art gallery. Salvador Dali exhibit is absolutely spectacular. 
don't miss it. Here is a machine gun of all my favorite pieces in the exhibit. Salvador Dali is officially my favorite painter right now. What an amazing art gallery of Salvador Dali. You can buy some of these paintings in the gallery shop. I'm trying the chimney cake. Chimney cake is a very popular dessert here in Prague. It's an Eastern European dessert made from sweet flour and you can fill it inside, you can have it plain or with ice cream or with some hazelnut chocolate. Very sweet, very tasty and full of carbs. Very popular dessert is also the langos. It's a kind of sweet pizza. I didn't try it myself, but it looks delicious. What's the name of this? Uh, langos. Another popular dessert in Prague is the potato pancake. I didn't try it myself, so if you did, please share your thoughts with other viewers in the comments below. There are tons of other desserts, so if there is something you like and recommend to the viewers, please write them in the comments. I am outside Prague Astronomical Clock. Prague Astronomical Clock is a medieval timepiece on the facade of City Hall, displaying the 12 apostles every hour on the clock. It's a tourist attraction. A lot of people gather here every hour exactly just to see it. You will be able to see the apostles right over there at the window. Every hour the window opens and they rotate and say hello to the crowd. Kind of like a tourist attraction, but pretty cool. Kind of cool, let's go up to the tower. I'm standing on the top of the Old Town Hall Tower in the Old Town of Prague, one of the most significant monuments in the Czech Republic. This building was built in the 14th century and it was the highest structure in all of Prague. The view from up here is absolutely mesmerizing. You can see all of the Old Town of Prague. Today is the only medieval tower in Prague that offers wheelchair access. I'm climbing up the historical Old Town Tower. It costs 200 kroner for admission per person. And if you want to use the lift, then it's 100 kroner extra, so 300 kroner total. Really mesmerizing view from the top. I 
After visiting all the attractions and the monuments in the old town square, if you want to follow the royal route, then continue walking through the old city, enjoying the local traditional experience until you reach the famous and iconic and probably the most known attraction in Prague and that is Charles Bridge. It's about a 10 minutes walk. I'm gonna reach it momentarily. Welcome to Charles Bridge. I'm standing on Charles Bridge, the most historic and famous monument in Prague and probably the Czech Republic as well. The bridge was built in 1357 by Charles IV. The bridge is decorated by over 30 ice guards. The bridge crosses the Vltava River and connecting the old town of Prague with the palace just on the other side. Let's take the drone up. Just at the entrance of the bridge, there is a monument of Carulo IV, the only Roman emperor, Charles IV, who built the bridge. Hey guys, if you find this video useful so far, I would highly appreciate if you can press the like button so that more people can find it. One of the main attractions in Prague is to take a sightseeing boat tour. The boat tour takes one hour, it costs 350 krona, and you can see all of Prague's landmarks from the vantage point of the river. You don't have to sit outside, they have a very cozy inside atmosphere as well, very romantic. I recommend to take it at 4 or 5 p.m. when it's twilight, so you can enjoy both day view and night view with all the lights. The boat goes through four bridges, and you can see most of the landmarks from the river. We just passed Charles Bridge, and here is the palace behind me. Very beautiful. The boat tour has an audio guide in eight languages, so you can learn about the landmarks and what you see. Another landmark on the Royal Road just adjacent to Charles Bridge is St. Nicholas Church and Bell Tower. It's better to come here before sundown so you can enjoy the picture sec view of the city. The church inside is absolutely beautiful, probably the most ornamented church in Prague. The entrance to the church is free, but it costs 150 krona per person to go up the bell tower. The church was built in 1745 and it took over 100 years and three generations to build. I'm climbing up the many stairs of St. Nicholas Tower. You need to climb 215 stairs to reach the top gallery of the 65 meter tall tower. St. Nicholas Church and Tower was used by the Partisan during World War II to launch attacks against the Germans' occupiers. The top of the tower is closed. You can only see the view through the small windows. I'm at Prague 
castle, the most touristic landmark in the Czech Republic with over 1.8 million tourists a year visiting the place. And no wonder this place is incredible. The Prague castle is an awe-inspiring edifice visible and gorgeous from almost any point in the city in both day and night. There are several important landmarks you must see in Prague castle. The first one is St. Vitus Cathedral, the largest and most important temple in Prague. Apart from religious services, this cathedral was used for the coronation of Czech kings and queens and is the final burial place of several saints, noblemen and archbishops. According to the Guinness Book of Records, the Prague Castle is the largest ancient castle in the world, occupying an area of over 70,000 square meters. Another important landmark is the Old Royal Palace. The Prague Castle was the seat of power for the kings of Bohemia, Roman emperors, and the presidents of the Czech Republic, and it is currently the office of the current president of the Czech Republic as well. This palace was the seat of residence of Bohemian princes and kings until the 16th century. They say the Bohemian crown jewels are hidden in a secret room somewhere in the castle. I wish I could see it and inspect it. It would be a dream as a jeweler. By the way, if you want to buy diamonds and gem jewelry, don't forget to contact me. The palace is decorated with old Bohemian banners and ancient furniture. Entrance to the castle and the courtyards is free, but if you want to enter the cathedral and the monuments inside, the ticket price ranges from 250 to 550 krona. You can spend your whole day roaming around the castle and finding some hidden gems inside, so save at least three hours to try to see everything. The most magnificent exhibit in the castle, in my opinion, is the Bohemian Crown Jewel. I'm looking at the Bohemian crown jewel. The crown is made from 22 karat gold and a lot of giant size, very high quality. Spinels, sapphires and rubies, especially the sapphires, look extremely clean. Should be worth a lot of money. The crown contains 19 sapphires, 44 spinels, 1 ruby, 30 emeralds and 20 pearls. From the color and the period, the sapphires are, in my opinion, should be Burmese, uneaten, so it makes them worth a lot of money. It's beautiful for me as a jeweler to inspect and see close hand an ancient crown of a Bohemian king. You can have a quick lunch at the authentic street food market at the courtyard of the palace. The next landmark in the castle complex is St. George's Basilica, one of the oldest churches in the Czech Republic. And my most favorite part of the castle was the Golden Lane. Make sure to buy a ticket to the Golden Lane, it's really cool. Look at this, and look at this. This is 100% where the Game of Thrones writer got his inspiration from. George R. R. Martin, I'm on to you. I found your secret. So this is how the knights used to shoot and defend the castle. You can see how people used to live back then. So apparently this is the street where Frank Kafka lived when he lived in Prague and wrote his books. Hey guys, if you find this video useful so far, I would highly appreciate if you can press the like button so that more people can find it.
I am in a Czech cuisine restaurant in the old town of Prague. Definitely one of the things to do when you visit Prague is to eat authentic Czech uh, cuisine. Czech cuisine is very rich with meat, a lot of bacon, a lot of pork, but they also have some vegetarian options like this potato soup in bread was absolutely delicious. I also ordered the duck after, but they also have a local fish cooked in traditional style, also look delicious. You haven't really visited the Czech Republic unless you try authentic Czech cuisine. Also, you cannot be in the Czech Republic without trying the local goulash. Very tender. There is a link in the description below of a really good traditional Czech restaurant located in the old city on the Royal Route. Definitely one of the things to do in the Czech Republic is to try the local beer. I'm at the Jewish Quarter in Old Town Prague, formerly known as the Jewish Ghetto. The Jewish Quarter it offers a lot of synagogues to explore, the old cemetery, a bunch of kosher restaurants, and a magical experience to walk in. If you're interested in Jewish culture of Bohemian and uh, in Czech and Eastern Europe, uh, it's definitely the place to study. They have a lot of museums and exhibits. I'm standing behind Frank Kafka's uh, statue. Frank Kafka was a Jewish novelist and short story writer, very famous. It is believed that if you touch the leg of Kafka, you get a good luck. So you can see all the locals and the tourists touching the leg and rubbing it like this. Also in the Jewish ghetto, just adjacent to the old new synagogue, there is a building with two clocks, a regular Roman clock and an Hebrew clock. This clock features the Hebrew alphabet and runs counterclockwise because Hebrew is written from right to left. The Jewish Quarter also has a lot of jewelry stores, Judaica shops, and all the luxury brands. Make sure to try the kosher kyotosh, it's a delicious dessert. And pay attention to this monster everywhere. If you want to know more about it, I will explain later, so keep watching. I'm at the Old Jewish Cemetery at the Jewish Quarter in Prague Old Town. The cemetery is the oldest one in Europe. It's kind of spooky. You can see the leaves falling down from the trees or rolling over on the floor. I swear I saw some cats running between the graves. As you walk through the thousands of tombstones, it kind of feels like you're in a ghost movie. If you don't have time to visit all the sites in the Jewish Quarter and have to decide one, I would recommend definitely the Old Jewish Cemetery. It's a strange kind of feeling, but it's an experience. very old tombstones and the stones are so cold. It's a Jewish tradition to put a, a small rock on the tombstones. So you can see the tombs with a lot of small stones on them. That means a lot of people come to visit this person. So this is Rabbi Judea Leva Ben Bechalel, died at 1609. I didn't know it the first time I visited the cemetery that this grave belonged to one of the most important rabbis in Jewish culture known to us as the Maharal of Prague. I came back a week later to do another video just about this rabbi, so keep watching to learn more and why you should ask a wish when visiting the grave of this important rabbi.
I'm standing at the tomb of the Maharal of Prague, also known as Rabbi Lev. The Maharal of Prague was one of the most important Talmudic rabbis of the last millennium. Legend says that the rabbi created a monster named Golem that used to protect the Jewish community from anti-Semitism and pogrom. And this is why the Jewish community in Prague really prospered during the years. The remains of the Golem are still stored in the attic of the synagogue, so keep watching for the next attraction. The rabbi died in 1609, but his teaching and writings are still present to this day. The Prague authorities also commemorate this rabbi. They have a statue of him in the new town hall. I just read a chapter of Psalms to commemorate the memory of this great rabbi. And I also made some prayer and wishes for myself and my family. It's a Jewish tradition to ask important rabbis for your hard desires and wishes for you and for your family. So if you visit the Jewish cemetery in Prague, make sure to stop at this grave and ask for your heart's desire. I assure you they will come true. I'm at the new old synagogue in Prague. The new old synagogue is one of the oldest Jewish landmarks in Prague and one of the oldest surviving synagogues in Europe. It's an active synagogue, so every Friday and Saturday they pray here. Legend has it that the foundation stones of this temple was brought from the destroyed Jewish temple in Jerusalem by angels on condition of the return upon restoration of the Jerusalem temple. The old new synagogue was enveloped in many legends and tales, and according to another legend, the remains of the golem of the Maharal of Prague are in the attic of the synagogue. At the back of the synagogue there is a ladder to the attic that according to local folklore was used by the golem to get in and out of the synagogue. Another important attraction in the Jewish quarter is the Pinkas Synagogue. The Pinka Synagogue is a memorial for the victims of the Nazi genocide during World War II. I'm at the Pinchas Synagogue. The Pinchas Synagogue is a memorial for the victims of the Holocaust, of the Nazi genocide, of the Jews of Czechia. The names of 80,000 otherwise forgotten Czech Jews that were murdered in the Holocaust are inscribed on the walls of the synagogue. This temple turned museum also commemorates the 153 Jewish communities in Bohemia and Moravia, as well as other localities where Jews lived that were destroyed during the war. Built in 1535, the synagogue is the second oldest surviving synagogue in Prague. For centuries, Prague Jews prayed and worshipped in this temple. The exhibit on the second floor of the paintings of Jewish children that were perished in the Holocaust gave me the chills. The Jewish Quarter has additional synagogues and museums to explore. The Spanish Synagogue, the Maisolova Synagogue, the Clausen Synagogue, and the Ceremonial Hall, each one with its own unique exhibits and style. The Spanish Synagogue is a modern synagogue that ironically was built on the oldest synagogue in Prague. I'm at the Spanish Synagogue in Prague. This synagogue is absolutely mesmerizing. It kind of looks like a church, very high dome with ornamented ceiling. The Spanish synagogue displays very unique Jewish objects and ornaments, as well as exhibits of renowned Jewish families and contemporary Jewish life from 1945 to the present. I mean the Meissen Synagogue in Old Town Prague, also known as Meisolova Synagoga. This is an old synagogue dating back to the 10th century, and it features an exhibit about Jewish Bohemian life from the 10th to 18th century. Nice synagogue, it doesn't seem like they use it today to prayer, it's just a museum. It's part of the museum tour of the Jewish city. You can buy a ticket to seven synagogues and museums and sites in the Jewish city for 500 krona per person. Make sure to sign the guest book. I mean the Clausen Synagogue. The Clausen Synagogue was built in the 1600s and it offers an exhibit of Jewish customs and tradition.
The Jewish Ceremonial Hall offers another exhibit of Jewish custom and traditions. If you are interested. The ceremonial hall was built for the last service to the deceased members of the Prague Jewish community. Just a pro tip for you guys who visit Prague and need to change money. A lot of the money changers really rip you off. They give you 10% below the official exchange rate and some of them even give you 50% less. I found this exchange next to the Palladium, which gives a really good rate, very fair rate. Right now the official exchange rate is 23 krona for dollar, 23.5, and this one gives 23, while the other ones give 18, 19, so make sure to choose the right exchange rate. And Palladium is in the city center, so it's very easy to come here. One way to know if you get a fair rate is to examine the spread between the buy and the sell. If the spread is narrow, like in this case 23 to 23.45, you get a really good rate. If the spread is higher than 5%, like in this case 15.5 to 24.68, you are being ripped off. I'm walking in a Czech market. The atmosphere here is very magical, especially now, just before Christmas. You really feel like you went back in time to old medieval times. You can find here almost everything. Honey wine, Christmas decoration for the Christmas trees, Czech made sweets, Czech made leather bags, beautiful basket of berries and strawberries, a plethora of spices, coffee and tea, pork sausage, hot wine and nutcracker. Pretty cool. And look at this nut. If you want to feel the Czech experience, definitely walk around this market and shop a little. It's so cold, they can keep the fruits and vegetables outside and the meat. I'm standing behind Frank Kafka's statue or rotating head. The statue of the writer Frank Kafka is 11 meter high and has 42 layers. The Prague locals are very proud that Frank Kafka chose Prague as his home, where he wrote most of his books. They consider this statue the technical marvel of the 21st century. Follow the statue's metamorphosis, wait for the right constellation of all movable layers and discover the portrait of Frank Kafka's. They have a cafe right nearby over there, it's called Aroma Cafe, where they say it's a cultural and gastronomy experience that must not be missed. So I'm gonna try the cafe inside. Just a tip, the statue moves every hour, so make sure to be on the hour. Before we continue, if you want to buy high-end diamond jewelry, please contact me on Instagram. I can get you excellent deals with all sale prices. I just finished the visit at Kafka's museum. The Kafka Museum shows the life of Frank Kafka, one of the most famous Jewish short story writer and novelist. Kafka lived and worked in Prague, where he wrote most of his books. I studied a lot of Kafka's work when I was a student at Stanford University, so it was really interesting to visit this museum and learn about Kafka. Most of the places he describes in his book are right here in Prague, from Charles Bridge to some of the cathedrals and churches. If you like Kafka's work, this museum is highly recommended. I'm at the bookstore at Kafka Museums. I got two of Kafka's short stories. Looking forward to read them. I haven't read them before. I am at Prague's State Opera. You haven't really been to the Czech Republic unless you experience some form of performance art. And opera is the purest form of theater. 
I'm watching Tosca by Puccini and I just love opera. You can really feel all the emotions, the love, the hate, the jealousy, the passion. The state opera is a magnificent building with a lot of ornaments, decorations, statues. Absolutely magical and authentic experience. You will feel like you went back in time to 1800, 1700 and you're watching like a performance art from back then. Pretty cool, amazing experience in Prague, highly recommend it. Definitely one of the things you must do. It's really cool, they give you binoculars so you can really see the faces of the opera singers. I got a private chamber on the balcony on the second floor, the same as Richard Gere got to Julia Roberts on the Pretty Woman movie. What an incredible experience here in Prague. Medieval dinner show. This show is amazing. They have belly dancer, fire show, swordsmen, all musical instruments. Cheers! There are two places that offer medieval show and dinner. I went to U Pavoka, that is located in the old city, but there is also a good show at U Karle, which is the oldest pub in Prague and located next to the palace. Keep watching for the next attraction. The show includes a five-course menu. When booking, you can choose your food preference of pork, chicken, or fish, and they also have vegetarian options. Book in advance because it gets full every night. You can also just go to dinner and order a la carte and skip the show, although I highly recommend the show experience. Adjacent to the castle, you can find Tavern U Karle, the oldest pub in Prague established in 1375. Going inside feels like you're going into a time capsule. The food looks delicious and they also have a medieval show and dinner which I highly recommend. I'm in the Museum of Illusion Art in Prague. This is a very cool museum that plays trick on your eyes. They have a lot of cool things around here, like this painting that looks like a horse is breaking out of the painting. Can make really cool photos. I really like this portrait made of shoes. Unbelievable, look at this. I'm in Vanslavske Square. Vanslavske Square is the center of business and cultural communities in the new town of Prague. Many historical events happened here, demonstration. They have a very nice Christmas market just down the road and a lot of shoppings. 
At the other end is the Nardoni Museum, which offers history and science exhibits. They also have a big toy shop around here with a butterfly house. Less a square than a boulevard, at the beginning of the square on the southeast side you can find the statue of Saint Wenceslas, a deceased Duke of Bohemia. The Boulevard Chap Square is even more mesmerizing at night with all the glimmering lights. Also guys, if you watch this video so far until this point, then it means you like it and appreciate my work. I would highly appreciate if you take a second to press the like button and please comment below what content you want to see more. Free diving, skydiving, things to do videos, diamonds or vlogs. This channel is here for you guys and your feedback is really important moving forward. One of the most underrated attractions in Prague is the Narodny National Museum. The museum interior design is absolutely stunning. The natural history exhibit features a beautiful specimen of a 23 meter long fin well dating all the way back to 1885. Strategically placing the well next to giant land animals, the exhibit allows you to grasp the size of this colossal creature. The prehistory exhibit features a mammoth and a baby mammoth and other long extinct species. The museum also has one of the world's most comprehensive minerals collection. From uranium to silver to even gold, you can see how different minerals look like in the raw form. The luminescence exhibit illustrates how different minerals shine under ultraviolet light. And my favorite was the meteorite exhibit where you can even touch stones from out of space. A real size meteorite from out of space. Look how big. I have a small sample of my own meteorites that I like to collect, but none of them is this huge. The museum also includes history exhibits of Bohemian art as well as the 20th century. The price to enter is only 250 kronas. I enjoyed my visit in the museum so much I made a full length video in case you are interested to see more. It has been a long time since I've been to such a reputable museum. I just finished watching the WoW show. It's a 4D interactive light show at the Black Theater. Very entertaining, very cool, different experience overall. You really feel like you are a part of the show. The actors come to you, they have some water drops. Pretty awesome. Very entertaining, 550 krona per person, 500 per student, recommended. Life is like a box of chocolate. You never know what you're going to get. Right, Forrest? I'm at the Coco Museum in the old town of Prague. The Coco Museum shows you all the history of the chocolate industry, and it teaches you everything you need to know about chocolate, from the seeds to the trees, to how to make it, very informative if you like chocolate. The top floor of the chocolate museum is a wax museum like Madame Tussaud, so you get two in one. I guess this is the Jewish corner with Einstein, the Maharal of Prague and the Golem. The Queen of England, look at the details, so real. Between Trump and Obama. I'm in Madame Tussaud in the old town of Prague. This Madame Tussaud is really cool. It shows you some of the medieval figures of Prague and the Czech Republic. They even have the music of the king. The top floor of Madame Tussauds features famous Hollywood stars like George Clooney and Julia Roberts.
Also along the Royal Route you can watch a concert by the Royal Czech Opera at St. Salvador Church. It looks really cool. They are playing the Four Seasons by Vivaldi, Symphony Number no. 5 by Beethoven, Bach. The price ranges from 600 krona to 900 krona depending on the seats. Pasta Fresca, an Italian restaurant in the old town of Prague. It's very unique because they made a fresh pasta right over here at the restaurant. Very tasty, highly recommended, and not very expensive, about $10 uh, for a pasta dish. The Prague Zoo is incredible. It is really state-of-the-art zoo with a lot of facilities. The Indonesian jungle house was absolutely spectacular. The porcupines are so cool, they are so curious. And they show me their unusual defense system. When they want to defend themselves, they turn around and point the thorns towards you. The gorilla enclosure is absolutely marvelous. You can sit there all day and watch the gorillas. I wasn't expecting much when I came to the zoo, but this zoo is incredible. I'm usually against of the zoo. I don't think animals should be in a close enclosures, but I do understand and I appreciate the educational value, especially for young children. So if you have young children, a visit to the Prague Zoo is definitely an unforgettable experience. The price to enter is 250 krona per person. I've been here for four hours and I still didn't see everything, so make sure you come for at least half a day to explore all the zoo. Be careful of the pelicans, ah. they bite. One of the popular activities of the locals like is to drink a hot wine in the street when it's cold outside, keeps you warm. You haven't been to Prague unless you try this local experience of drinking hot wine in the street with the locals. For those of you who don't drink alcohol, they have fruit punch or forest punch or alcohol-free wines that you can drink. Very tasty. A perfect complement to the wine is the very delicious traditional Czech street food. Very popular in Prague is the potato with ham. I keep kosher so I can eat it, but let me know in the comments below if you tried it and if it's good. If you would like to do shopping in Prague, I recommend the Palladium Shopping Mall. Palladium Shopping Mall is the most famous shopping mall in Prague. It's located just next to the old city. If you are into shopping, definitely check this place out. The shopping mall is very luxurious and contains all the brand names. However, if you would like something less touristy and less pricey, I recommend Novi Simchov Shopping Mall. It's a little bit out of the touristic area, but it's giant and the prices are much better. They also have amazing food court and good cinema. I'm outside the dancing house. The dancing house is another tourist attraction in Prague. It's a post-modern architecture and it is made from steel, concrete and glass. They have a cafe at the top. I'm gonna go now to check it out. I'm at the top of the Dancing House Hotel. The cafe on the top offers a very nice view of the river and the city. 
you can see Charles Bridge as well as other bridges and a nice view of the mountain. It's very nice now in the winter with the snow on the top of the buildings and on the hills. Very nice place to have a glass of hot wine or hot chocolate. I'm at Shooters Island on the Valtava River in Prague and it's really cool, this park is amazing, you can feed the beavers, they are not afraid of you. I've never touched a beaver before, so cool. They are so gentle and they don't bite at all. They kind of like pinch your hand with their teeth and check if you are food. Shooters Island is one of the less touristic local hidden gems of Prague with a nice park, scenic views to the National Theatre and Charles Bridge, and even ice skating ring in the winter. I'm at the National Theatre in Prague. The National Theatre is a magnificent building built in the 1850s. It is one of the Czech Republic's most important institutions for ballet, operas and dramas. I highly recommend if you visit Prague that you go to some performance art. Just go to the box office and see what you like and what is good for your schedule. I highly recommend that you choose other the state opera or the National Theatre because these venues are absolutely stunning. I'm watching The Barber from Sevilla, really nice opera. We just finished Act 1, I can't wait for Act 2. Ticket price are ranging from 300 kuna to 1200 kuna per person, depending on your location. Anonymous Bar is a concept bar with very unique cocktails. It is conveniently located in the old town of Prague. Space is limited, so make sure to make reservations. I will put a link in the description below. Attempting to compete with Amsterdam, Prague was one of the first cities to legalize weed. If weed is your thing, you can find a cannabis shop almost everywhere in the city and get weed and edibles for a fraction of the price you would pay in Amsterdam. I never smoked weed myself, so let me know your thoughts about the quality in the comments below. If you have young kids, Hamley's toy shop is every kid's heaven. It is usually packed with locals, entrance is free, and they have a cool Golem VR experience. They also have very nice butterfly house, which is the next attraction, so keep watching. I 
I'm at the Butterfly House at Hamleys. Hamleys is a giant toy store in Prague. It's a crazy toy store with a lot of activities and attractions for the kids. If you have small kids, I guarantee they are going to enjoy the shop. I came here because I love butterflies and they have a butterfly house. Really cool. This one is really beautiful. It is blue and it opens its wing. Wow. I'm in Prague's Beer Museum. Prague Beer Museum offers a variety of Czech beer. They have maybe two dozen options. I chose the beer testing menu. They give you a small cup of each beer. Basically, it's a culinary tour of beers from the Czech Republic. The price for the testing menu is 220 kronas. Pretty cool concept if you like beers. Sweet with cherries. Dark and bitter, light and bitter, light and fluffy, medium dark and salty. As the name implies, the Sex Machine Museum shows you the kinky history of sex from medieval times to the present. They have a lot of old things, they even have an 18th century cash register, so if you are into kinky old devices, that's a must visit. They also have a cool love tester at the entrance. It's completely free, but as you can see, it's not very reliable because I got cold while another girl got burning. Cool. I'm at the Lego Museum in Prague. They have an amazing collection of Legos. It really took them a few decades to build and collect. If you're into Lego like I am, it's pretty cool. The price to enter is 280 kruna per person. It takes no more than 20-30 minutes. And they have a playing room at the back where you can play and build some things with your kids. I found it very interesting to see the evolution of the LEGO logo and the LEGO design throughout the years. They have a model of the powder gate, the city gate to Prague, pretty cool. Charles Bridge. Prague is full of medieval churches, each with its own unique style and art. The specific church in the old town is St. Gilles Church. It has a beautiful mural on the dome which I found to be stunning. Entries to the churches are usually free, 
so feel free to go and explore, but please remember to respect the local rules and religious guidelines. Thank you guys for watching, I have more things to do videos already on my channel and dozen more on the pipeline from cities around the world so make sure to come back not to miss another video. Comment below which content you want to see more, skydiving, freediving, things to do, tutorials, this channel is here for you guys.